Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. This video is for anyone who uses Moodle and wants to deliver in a flipped classroom mode. So it could be any subject, it could be teaching science, maths or whatever, but if you're thinking of using Moodle to deliver your flipped classroom mode of learning, then you're gonna find this course really useful. It's a two part course. This is the first part. I'm gonna show you step by step how to build a course that's got video content for the students to access at home and activities for them to do access at home. And that way then you can bring those or link those activities to what you do in a classroom. I'm gonna start with the super quick reminder of a few really important things to think about before you flip your class and then get straight into it. Really hope you like the video. If you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it, and as always, please follow me on my channel. Let's get straight into it. Okay, the super important thing to remember about the flipped classroom is what we're trying to do is get the students to do the lower order thinking skills at home so that they can spend more time in the class doing group work and task-based activities and activities that will activate the higher order thinking skills. Now in a traditional class, we tend to teach and then get the students to go home and do activities that are related to these higher order thinking. We're trying to flip that. Now Moodle can play a great role in that because Moodle can be perfect for providing a platform where the videos are available and the learning content is available for the students to access so that they can learn the lower order thinking skills, but also to create activities that make sure that they process that knowledge and check their understanding. Because even if you're asking students to go home and watch a video or read an article or listen to a podcast, you still want them to do something, some type of quiz or test or discussion to make sure that they've understood the basic lower order thinking skills. Then what you wanna do is link that into the classroom and in the class you wanna do activities that will then process the new knowledge. So let's think about that in terms of actually delivering a Moodle course and perhaps look at some little ideas of the sorts of things that we can do and then I'm going to show you how to actually do it. So let's have an, an example here we've got a course here where we've got some content we've got like this introductory unit of the course okay uh, where we've got a video and then the actual main content starts so this is just an introduction area then the main contents underneath notice we've got unit one and we've got a video to watch and then we've got a series of activities to do afterwards related to that content so the idea very much with the flipped classroom is that normally you're going to be providing the students with video content and then some activities to do to help them to remember and learn i'll jump back to this screen every so often what we're going to try and do is reproduce something similar to this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a completely empty course. And the first thing I'm going to do is not do the general area. I'm going to get straight into the content and show you how you might build a unit, a flipped classroom learning content. And slowly but surely, we're going to build up a opening part and two actual units of content for you to see. Let's get started now then with the first part. So I've just turned the editing on. You can turn your editing on and off here. I want to turn it on, editing on. I'm going to start with this first unit and I'm going to click here to edit the kind of top part before I start putting the content in. So I'm just going to click on here, click on edit topic. And one thing that I often do is I like to have a kind of banner at the top of the screen and then maybe the title of the unit. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to insert an image I'm going to go to uploads, I'm going to upload a file, I'm going to grab something very quickly from my desktop. I'm going to use this one here, banner 500, so it's just about 500 pixels wide. I'm going to click on that and then I'm just going to add that in, there it is, you can see it. And now we've added that onto the screen. If you actually select that as well, a little tricky, if you just select it, it's always a little bit tricky to do that, there we are. And then you click on this button here where it says align center, you can bring the banner into the center. Now I'm gonna click just past the banner, so, and then click on enter to come down the line. And I'm gonna put here course, in fact, let's start by putting the actual main title for the unit. So we're gonna call this unit one learning to learn. That's going to be the main title. And what I'm going to do is, I always do this, I'm going to use these kind of format buttons here. So I'm going to call that, that's going to be level heading two. So every single unit will begin with a kind of title in level two 
font and then I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to put unit one content so this is actually now and we're going to call this um, video okay and that I'm going to make on another level so I'm going to put that onto heading three now what I would normally do is obviously underneath here I'm quite likely to have a little bit of writing and I'm going to just copy something a minute and paste it in just a quick introduction to what the unit is about and then the same thing under here I'm likely to have a little bit of text that I can copy or I can write it in of course and then the video will go underneath but let's start by getting the video in because it's the most important thing and perhaps something that you need to you may not know how to do so how do we upload video into Moodle uh, and this will be video from YouTube Actually, I should have put there learning to learn, not, not learning to learning. Sorry, I got that wrong. I'm going to click over onto the video, of the YouTube video I want to work with. I'll click on the share button here. So this is a video about learning to learn. It's about different techniques for studying, uh, efficient ways to study. I'm going to click and copy all of that. And you can actually click on that button there as well. That will make sure you copy it. Close that down. Come back. And all I need to do here, and I can just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it nice and clear, is I'm going to jump over. First of all, make sure that the cursor's in exactly the place that you want it to be. Click here to come over to, because what you're going to do is paste in the code. Again, just press on the enter button so the cursor drops down a line, and then just press paste. And that video is going to go in. Now, a good trick when you put up video from YouTube, often it's quite big. On the screen and sometimes you want it to look a little bit better so what i do is i often reduce it by about 10 or 20 percent and you've got to make sure that you reduce it the width and the height so all you need to do is very simple just come in here and if i did, did a quick calculation 20 percent there would be 112 so I'll, I'll do it just 110 that will be fine so i'm going to reduce that down to 450 so i've reduced that the width by about 20%. I'm going to do the same here, so that would be about 63, so I'm going to put that down to about 250 pixels. So we've now made the video smaller. If I click on update, you'll now see that we've got the video on the screen and we've also resized it. All I need to do now is to come over to here and click on save changes and we've got the video on the screen now. There it is. Now the only thing is it doesn't look very good at the moment for a couple of reasons. Number one would be nice to have a line underneath where the topic goes. Okay, and I'll just put that underneath there. And then there's always a good idea to have a little bit of writing um, to introduce the video. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna come back into the editing, just a couple of really quick ways to improve that. So if I come back here now, edit topic again, first thing I'm gonna do is after I've got the banner and the topic, I'm just gonna put a line there. It looks really nice if you just do that, just tidies it up immediately, okay? So I've done that. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is in fact let's again let's just make that bigger so you can clear that and the second thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm just going to put in some text now I won't waste time in the video I'm just going to quickly write this and then uh, you'll see it okay so what I've done is I've written here this video looks at different techniques we can use to study more efficiently please watch the video take notes and then go to the discussion forum below remember when we're working at the flipped classroom we want the students normally at home to watch a video and then do an activity to get a basic understanding and help them to remember the lower order skills the lower order thinking skills the basic knowledge on that topic and then hopefully we're going to do something with that in the classroom so I've done that and I'm now going to just click on the this button and click on save changes and immediately you'll see that it looks all a little bit more professional straight away now we've got a kind of banner and then underneath we've got the the first video uh, on the screen uh, if we turn the um, editing off just for a sec you get an even better look of how the topics actually gonna look so it's topic one there it is and what we need to do now is to have some activities that we want the students to do after they've watched the video. So that's what I'm gonna focus on now. And what we'll do for this first video is we're just gonna add one activity, and that first activity is gonna be a discussion forum related to uh, the video. So again, we need to turn the editing on. And this time, what we're doing is we're gonna add a link underneath, and we're gonna click here so that there will be a discussion forum here that the students will be able to do once they've watched the video and taken some notes. We click on here, and what the one we're looking for then is forum. We click on that, and then what you wanna do here is give it a forum name, so we're gonna call this one discussion 
about learning to learn, okay? That's simply for your own reference. Now, it's quite useful to put a little description here, and that will go underneath on the opening page. That will go underneath the link. So I'm just going to put here, uh, watch, after watching the video, click on this link and go to the discussion, okay? So this is where you're actually creating the forum once you've created a forum you then need to add all your questions now in this case i'm just going to add one question so i'm just creating the forum one little tip here click on this button here and that way this description will actually be on the front page of the course let me just show you that by clicking on save and return you'll now see that when we come back there it is we've got our first button on the screen and we've got a quick description of what that button does or what that link does now what we need to do now is actually edit that okay so if we click on it again to come back into it then now what we need to do is actually add a question okay so so far all we've got is a discussion forum but we haven't actually added a question into it yet so i'm going to click on this one i'm going to call this one learning to learn and where you actually put the question is here so i'm going to write the question in so again, what I'm doing here is I've written in the text, choose one idea that you especially liked regarding the learning to learn lecture. Please explain why you like it to answer. Click on the reply button. So this is the actual question that the students will see. I'm not going to add anything along with that. Just going to be simply and I'm going to click on post a forum and we're now ready. And as you can see, we've got now an actual discussion question. So when the students come on, they'll see this and when they click on it, it gives them the question. There it is. Choose one idea that you especially like regarding and they understand very clearly that they need to click on the reply button that is it we've now got a video up on the screen and in this very first unit of course we've simply got one discussion now we could add more discussion forums that could be a possibility if you wanted to add a second or even a third discussion forum related to that video or of course you could do another activity and in fact in the second unit we're going to do that for now what i'm going to do though is just go back to this course and just look at a bit a little bit how we could tidy up that first part the header section uh, which is often the part before uh, the students actually start the learning content so I'm just going to click on this button to get back to the section where I want to get to flip classroom teacher training videos we've got now our first section done okay with a kind of banner at the top might be a nice idea to put a little bit of text in here and then we've got the kind of bit of information about the first video students can watch the first video and then they can do that discussion now at the moment we haven't got anything here in the kind of general area and it would be a good idea to have this same banner up in the general area as well as some basic information about the course so very similar to the way that we did the content for the topic we're going to click on this button here okay so edit section and in fact one good thing about the way that Moodle works is once you've uploaded an image then you can find it again very easily so I'm just going to click on this button here and I'm going to just simply go to upload image and I'm going to choose recent files and it should be there yes it is click on that and then collect select that and just uh, overwrite and that now will be added into the page okay remember what I can do is I can kind of just just using select that image and then center it and I'm gonna just put under here um, now what I would probably put under here is a little bit of text about um, the course so I'm gonna write general course information okay and this is a major title so I'm gonna select that it's really important to use these kind of different headings because it then keeps everything equal every time. And now I'm going to save those changes. We've now added in uh, our kind of top section. But what we would need to do now is add some text in. So jumping back to it, OK, click on edit. And uh, one little thing that we can do here as well. I'm going to come down just to make that a little bit bigger so you can clearly see it. So what I need to do now is just to add in some text. And to save time, I'm just going to copy some text from somewhere else and paste it in. So I'm just going to click and paste the text straight in. Okay, obviously you would normally write it in, but I'm just pasting it in just to do this really quickly. Again, I'm going to click on Save Changes. And suddenly now we've got a opening part at the beginning of the course. Okay, and then underneath we've got the first topic. So really quickly we're building this up. One to make things consistent, I'm going to click on this button here again, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with the line. I'm going to click under here, and I'm going to do a line across the screen. 
Uh, really what I probably want is a slightly bigger banner really it would work nice to say perhaps if the banner was six or seven hundred pixels wide uh, it's gonna look more professional but it's not looking that bad I mean just to very quickly get a course together and get the early content together for that course and it's not looking too bad uh, it gives you a few tips on on how you can kind of make your course look a little bit more organized okay and as you build up the course, it will uh, work more. Okay, so we've done the first unit. I'm gonna do another unit, but this second unit is gonna be very different. We're gonna actually make our own video and we're gonna upload that video into the screen. And then we're gonna add, in the second unit, we're gonna add a couple of different activities for the students to do after they've watched the video. Really hope that you've found that useful. Don't forget this is part of a two-part course and you can actually click on that second part now on the screen above or if you go into the description, it will be there. If you've liked the video, please like it. Please share it. Uh, please comment on it if you've got any questions about Moodle. And of course, please, if you can, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, let's get into part two now. Either click on the link in the description below or the link that's above. If you're looking for more free content, please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. There's even a special section on Moodle there at the top, lots of videos there that you can access. If you'd like to follow my work and follow what I'm doing, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That way you'll be updated with all the webinars I do, any blog posts I write, any articles I publish, any online courses I'm running, where I'm presenting, etc. Uh, so that's a really good idea and you also get informed about any new videos I've created. If you're looking for all the back content, then another place to look where you'll find even more than on the, YouTube, on the website is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the channel, don't forget to click on the bell because that way you'll be updated when new videos go up onto the YouTube channel. But on that channel, there are lots and lots of videos backdated for at least a couple of years that are still really relevant. Finally, if you wanted me to do a presentation for your organization or institution or a workshop or you wanted to do an online course with me either individually or as a group, I do have access to a proper online classroom, then please contact me from the website and I'll see what I can do and thank you very much.